Thank you to my Patreon patrons and YouTube members. Your support keeps the lights on. If you want to access extra perks like early video access, special emotes and badges, a lounge area in the Discord server, or the ability to choose the next project setting, check the links in the description below. Now, let's get on with the video. What's going on, my kids and aids? It's your favorite Baytown Fox Foxy. Come back into a brand new episode of The Town Dragon Lake. And in today's brand new episode, we're going to be continuing on with the industrial park. In fact, I think we're going to be getting it to completion because I want to focus the rest of this area on, well, Midtown. Because this downtown area, this transition to Midtown and the suburbs is going to be absolutely tiny. So, um, yeah, we're going to want to be prepared at just about every possible turn. We still got the highway that's planned to kind of like run under this. Although at no point I noticed did I actually work on that. I kind of just realized that I probably should have at some point in this episode, but... I mean, what can you do now if we're being honest here? But anyways, right now, my goal right now is to try to complete the utilities and everything like that. We're still going to get a um, functioning funeral home and stuff like that, apparently, in this game. In this game, apparently, there's, like, death care. But outside of that, I'd say we're mostly ready to start the simulation. Well, actually, technically, SimCity 4 had it, too. The um, cemetery was more of a reward building than anything else. But we got to decide where the city, the worst place to be in a zombie apocalypse is going to be. I mean, let's be real. It's just got to happen. Someone's got to take the brunt if there's ever a Nox event in the city. Also, yeah, that joke was way funnier in my head than I actually thought it was going to be. But anyways, right about now, we're currently working on some road decorations, some additional um, industry stuff. You might have noticed we place some stuff in the beginning and then get rid of it later. Yeah, those oil tankers were just too good to resist because you see them in a lot of industry areas. I've seen them a good chunk before. They're basically, I think they're like oil storage tanks. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. And I've seen them largely like before in like industrial districts of major cities. I, I don't think I've ever really been to an area of the world where oil drilling is a big thing. The closest that I've got plans for is the, um, is, is Florida out here. And even then too, I don't plan on relocating to the Gulf Coast because while well, that area takes too much hurricane brunt and Miami's just plain too expensive. Jacksonville's too far north. I think it's actually below freezing in Jacksonville at the time of recording this, at least at night and in the morning here. So, um, yeah, I think I'll take the, um, Disney Orlando region any day of the week on that one here, too. But, anyways, not the point right about now. The point is, I've never been to an area where you're gonna see those, like, a lot more frequently. Again, I've never been to an oil drilling area of the world. I've never been to, like, Texas or something like that, so I wouldn't know if this city could be a good oil hotspot. Maybe it is, I don't know, maybe it is. But I really don't know. But anyways, we're putting down some other generic factories. You can also see me trying to put down some service stations as well, particularly fire and police. And as soon as I saw the prison in the area, I knew that I had to go here as well. Because one, it's already in an area where nobody wants to live. And two, it's right next to a bunch of factories. So what you can do is you can have work release programs and stuff like that to try to help inmates find a place in society after they get out. After all, you don't want them reoffending, right? And speaking of which, actually, we need a courthouse, too, because that actually kind of does remind me of a um, video on YouTube I saw when I was younger about a judge who was actually, instead of handing out prison sentences like judges would normally do, they were handing out creative punishments instead. And some of those, I gotta give the judge some credit here. One, because some of the punishments actually did wind up fitting the crime pretty perfectly, actually. And then on top of that, too, the reoffending rate in that judge's courtroom was like, what, I think less than 10%? And the national average is 70%. So, um, yeah, that's a pretty sharp drop. Clearly that judge is doing something right there. I don't know if it's a thing that every judge can do, but it's definitely better than um, a ballooning prison population. Like, I'm from the States, and literally the first thing I did, and yes, I just built a pizza hut, and now I want a stuffed crust pizza. That is definitely going to be fun right now because obviously like the bookkeeping is kind of tight at the moment and I don't even trust DoorDash so like hell I'm working with them. I'd rather just get the license myself at this point but not my point though. Not my point. Basically I'm from the states so my first instinct when I built the prison and you already know it's ingrained in my brain when I say the first instinct when I built the prison was to upgrade it. Again, that's what, the, that's what the whole war on drugs thing, if I recall correctly, did. It ballooned the prison population beyond points where the actual systems could handle. So, um, 
yeah, that's definitely fun. And it wasn't even that effective anyway. In fact, if I recall correctly, it made people want to do drugs more. So I guess I got to prepare for even more inmates. Unless, of course, a change is made. I could probably make, like, a city ordinance or put this city in, like, a state where, you know, recreational weed is legal, for example. Because um, there, the number of U.S. states where that is the case is growing. Hell, it almost happened in my own state of all places. My home state of Indiana almost had this happen. So, yeah, it could, literally anything can happen. Obviously, the legislation kind of got blocked, unfortunately. And, yep, you guessed it, the alt-right stepped in the literal last second and blocked it, which, come on, man, let people have their fun, don't give, actually, um, I do want to bring this up, too, because the whole reason that stuff is even illegal in the first place is because DuPont was lobbying against it. They were, like, fear-mongering and everything like that, because it turns out they had an alternative to hemp that could be used, I believe, when it comes to like, I, I don't exactly know what WD-40 is used for, by the way, or whatever chemical that DuPont created that is capable of doing what hemp does. But the problem that DuPont was facing in the 1940s is that hemp was much cheaper and much easier to produce. And of course, you know, DuPont decides to fund like a bunch of fear mongering campaigns and everything like that, that, oh, it's going to turn you into this horrible person or something like that. And it actually worked. Pretty much every U.S. state was banning it. And then the federal government came in and moved it over to, is it Schedule 2 or Schedule 1? I think it's Schedule, I, I can't remember for the life of me, but I know weed was basically classed as a Schedule illegal drug, basically. Is it Schedule 1 or Schedule 2 that's illegal? I don't know. But all I know right now is that's kind of the case because of that whole campaign. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of good reading material on it, so again, I would recommend finding, like, your own stuff on it. But it definitely is something that what I first heard about definitely did capture my interest. I'm like, oh, so, um, that's why Mary, Mary Jane is illegal. Oh. Yeah, that's probably the most American thing ever, but anyways, we're running over time for recording this episode. If you did go on to enjoy this episode, obviously, you know what to do. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye for now and have a great day or night, no matter where in the world.